Hello and welcome. Today we're diving into how to handle background jobs in Go using the powerful GoCraft slash work package. Let's get started. This package is an essential toolkit for managing background jobs in Go. It allows us to queue and process jobs reliably. In this episode, we are going to cover a lot of topics. First, we will discuss why we need background jobs, how it is different from using Go's built-in concurrency. Then, we will implement a sample application to demonstrate how to use background jobs. In the advanced topics, we will make use of the context and middleware to do some pre-processing before the job starts. We will take a look at the user interface that provides the status of the queued and processing jobs. We will also learn about the check-in feature that shows the internal state of a long-running job. Let's understand why we need background jobs. Can we do the same with go routines? It is a big no. Let's look at the use cases that make background jobs favorable. Background jobs are used for tasks that need to run independently of the main application flow and may take a long time to complete, such as data processing, batch jobs, or maintenance tasks. Most background job systems persist the state of jobs in a database, in our case, Redis. If the application restarts or crashes, the jobs can be resumed. Background job systems can be configured to control resource utilization, such as limiting the number of concurrent jobs running. It comes with built-in support to scale tasks across multiple workers or machines and can manage a large number of concurrent jobs more efficiently. Let's begin by installing GoCraft Work. The next two commands install the web user interface that we will discuss later in the episode. We have two applications here, Encure and Process Jobs. Let's take a look at the Encure. This code simulates the main application. The background jobs queued by this application are run in the Process Jobs application. Here we build the Redis pool. Redis is used as a job queue. Here we specify the maximum active connections and max idle connections. The host address and port are here. The job in Cure is created here. This is the namespace of the queue. And here we provide the Redis pool where the queue resides. A job is enqueued with this method. It takes the name of the job and job arguments. This job is to send an email to the user with the email ID specified here, and the subject is here. Now let's take a look at the application that processes the jobs in a separate process space. We create a Redis pool here too. This is required to pick jobs from the queue. This is the context that is required by the work package. We will see it soon in use. With this method, we create a worker pool that can execute multiple jobs at a time. The first argument is the context. This is the concurrency. It means 10 jobs can be run simultaneously. This is the namespace of the queue. And finally, the Redis pool. Next, we create a mapping of job names to the functions executing the job. We have only one job here, email. It is mapped to the function send email. 
Then the worker pool is started with this. This piece of code handles SIGTERM signal, handles it so that the application can be terminated gracefully. After the termination signal, the pool is stopped. Let's look at this function that sends email. Any job handling function takes the job as the argument and returns error. Here, we retrieve the email address and the subject of the email from the job. As we are not really sending an email, we print the details here and sleep for a couple of seconds. At the end, return no error. Let's try to execute. We will first start the worker pool. Now let's push a job to the queue with the oncure. As we can see, the job is picked up and is being executed. Let's add more jobs. Now multiple workers from the worker pool have picked up the jobs and are running in parallel. Sometimes we want a particular job to be retried a few times in case of a failure, or we want to set a priority of the job. We can do so while creating this mapping. We can use this function, job with options. In this function, we specify the job name, then job options. We set the priority and max fails which is how many times this job will be tried if it fails. The last argument is the function that runs the job. Let's remove this. This is how we can set different priorities and retry count for our jobs. Let's see how we can use middleware to do some pre-processing. We will start with a simple middleware that logs the beginning of the job. This function log is a context pointer function. It takes the job and the next middleware as arguments and returns error. Here we are simply printing the job name and its ID. Now, let's add the middleware to the worker pool. For this purpose, we use the function middleware. We can add middlewares like this. Let's run the code. Now we get this print. Starting a new job. Here is the ID and the job name, email. We have not used much of the context yet. Let's make use of this in a middleware. Suppose we pass the ID of the user in the job arguments. This middleware will get the user record and add it to the context. Before this, let's create the user structure. It has three fields, ID, email and name. Let's add the current user in the context structure. To save time, I will paste the middleware. This function, find current user, checks if there is user ID in the job arguments. Here, we fetch the user ID. Then we need to query the DB for the user record. We are only simulating the scenario here. For this app, we have just set the fields in the current user object in the context here. In the ID, we have put the user ID received in the arguments.
In the email also, we have put the user ID. And we have set this name. The pointer to this user record is assigned to the current user in the context. Now let's add the middleware. This function, send email, does not know about the context. Let's associate this function with the context. Now suppose the email is not the job argument and the ID of the user is. Since the middleware runs before this, the context should have the current user. And from the current user, we can get the email ID. Let's change this mapping now. Now we need to make changes in the enqueue also. Let's replace the email with user ID. The enqueue creates a new job email which has job argument user ID. This middleware converts the user ID into the user record in current user in the context. Then, in the job execution, in send email function, the email address is retrieved from the current user. This email address is used to send the email to the user. Let's try this out. Here we can see the email ID has the ID of the user. Our middleware and the worker are working fine. In this section, we will see how from one job we can trigger another job. Let's say we have another job to create a report that has to be sent to the user. We will create another job called report. Let's create the mapping now. Now suppose once the report is ready, we want to send the report via email to the user. Sending an email is a simple task that can be sent from here. But say, if this task is big and takes time, you would like to offload the job and enqueue it in the queue. For this we will need the enqueuer here as well. Let's copy it from the enqueuer. and paste it here. Now, we can enqueue the job like this. The arguments are user ID and the subject. Let's make changes to the Onqueur project so that it sends the report-making job.
In this job we have set the user ID as 5. Let's run it. Now two jobs are started. One email job on user ID 10. Then the report job is started. After the report is prepared, a new email job is queued and is picked up for the user with ID 5. Now we will learn how to use the web UI to see the current status. We can run the web UI server with this command. This is the command. Then we need to provide the Redis URL as it retrieves information from Redis. Next is the namespace which is Demo App. And the port on which this server runs, we are running it on port 5040. This is how the UI looks. Let's click on Queues. We can see there are two queues, email and report. Right now, no workers are running. Let's run the worker process. Now it shows one worker process running. I enqueued a job. And it shows a job running. This tool can be used to monitor the queue and processes. Sometimes in such systems for a long-running process, it is hard to find if the process is running or stuck. There is no other way but to dig the logs. Go Craft Work provides a way called Check-In. Let's see how it works. Let's keep this job running for long by increasing the sleep time to one hour. Usually any long-running process does not have a sleep like this. To make it closer to reality, let's break it down to smaller sleeps using a loop. Here in this loop we can call check-in function that shows that the job is active. In check-in we will print the value of i. Let's restart the worker process. Now, on queue a job. Let's look at the web UI. Here we have the process running. Keep this check-in at time in mind. Let's refresh the page. Here is the check-in message and this is the check-in time. Let's refresh again. And the time changes again. It shows that the process is alive. All right, that wraps up our deep dive into handling background jobs in Go using the powerful GoCraft Work package. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with our latest tutorials. Your support helps us bring more content like this to you. Until next time, Keep coding, keep improving, and see you in the next episode.